Hey, what's going on everyone? Gumby here. Um, I hope that you're having a happy holiday, a Merry Christmas. I'm recording this commentary a little early. I'm gonna be off this week, spending time with family. I'm gonna be away from my house and away from my studio. Uh, so I'm gonna probably post this later in the week, probably around Christmas Eve. So that's if you're watching this, I hope that you're having a Merry Christmas or just happy holidays, whatever you celebrate with family and loved ones. And I'm spending that important time away from work and and play and, and enjoying each other. But that's not what this commentary is about. This commentary is about something that I've had my hands on for a little while. I've captured some gameplay of me using it and uh, finally gathered my thoughts and had some time to make a video about it and it's uh, Valve's new Steam controller. So this controller's out, you can purchase it on Steam now. I think it's still technically pre-order but they're sending it out in waves so there's not one final date that everyone's gonna get one. I think I pre-ordered mine in November and I got it at the beginning of December. Um, so uh, you, if you have one of these waiting for you under the tree or if you're on the fence about pre-ordering it for yourself, I'm hoping that this commentary gives you some insight on how it actually feels when you're using it in a real-life gaming situation. So I'm going to talk about first the hardware and then I'm going to go over four games. Um, one of them is Counter-Strike Go, the other is uh, Portal 2, then I'm going to go over um, Civilization uh, 5. So, and then I'm going to also go over Rocket League. So Portal 2 and Rocket League were given to me with purchasing the controller. I had already owned Portal 2. Um, and then Counter-Strike and Civ, I think, are similar games that you would want to use a controller for, like a first-person shooter and then also a strategy-type game, but they're also very different. So it gives a wide range of games of what you would want to use this for. Um, but going over the hardware really quickly... So the controller is made of plastic. It's fifty dollars. It's um, ten dollars cheaper than like an X, the new Xbox One controller, not the Elite, but a regular one. So it, I mean, it's it is plastic. I think it still feels kind of cheap. Uh, it's got a good weight to it, but I don't know. I th still think that my Xbox controller feels like a little higher quality in terms of the materials that they use, and it's only $10 cheaper, so I wish that they would have maybe done a little bit better on that front. But the hardware buttons, we have a Steam Home button in the center and then a Start and Back button right next to that. Uh, and then you have two trackpads. They're motion trackpads, so they're touch sensitive. One is on the left is more like a D-pad. You can see the cross um, on the trackpad itself. It's more if you want to symbolize it to a keyboard and mouse situation, it's more like a mouse trackpad. So this is where you're going to be doing your aiming. Uh, but they're both, um, like I said, track. they're trackpads, so they're motion, uh, not motion, but touch sensitive. And then you can also click them. They have that haptic clicking feedback. And then you have an analog stick on the left, so that's pretty much used for your movement in any games that you're going to be playing. And then you have an XYBA button set, the four button set that's similar to an Xbox One controller. And then the uh, actual handles have these uh, interesting curves. They're supposed to sit like inside your palms and then just have your two thumbs curve right over them. For my hands, they don't work particularly perfectly. Uh, I feel like it's a little awkward at times, but I also think it's just different. And I like that they're trying to change the way the controller feels in the hand, so I'm not going to hate on that. Um, it just feels a little weird, but I think it's also just getting used to it. And then on the top of the device, you have a micro USB 2 cable port. So this is where you can actually plug in the controller if you don't want to use batteries. And then um, the controller also works wirelessly if you use batteries in the controller. And there's a USB dongle that you can plug into your PC. And then also on the top, you have four buttons. You have similarly, similar button uh, bumper buttons like Xbox has, so left and right on the top, and then you have the left and right trigger buttons. Um, and then on the very back where you have your battery uh, panel, there's also two, two buttons on the handles that can be uh, mapped to anything. And every single button on, these, uh, on this controller can be mapped to any button, any control inside of a game that you want. Um, you can also set up certain profiles for certain games, and you can also pl publish these to the, st to the Steam community, and you can download other people's controller mapping. So it's really free roam of how you want to use it to play the game. But going into the separate games, so like I said, I'm going to go over um, four games, Rocket League, Counter-Strike, Civilization, and Portal 2. I'm going to go over Rocket League first. Uh, I really enjoyed playing, playing Rocket League with the controller because it doesn't use a lot of controls. You're really just using your analog stick and then um, you know the, few, the triggers and then the jump buttons are like A. Um, and, and then changing the camera are, uh, is like B and Y. And you can change all these controller, controls that you want 
to feel good in the hand. But I think the thing that I found most with games that I liked using controller with is you don't really have to move your hand at all when using the controller. Uh, Rocket League served that purpose because it's just a racing game. It's fun. It's something you just sit on your couch and play, and I think that's really the purpose for the Steam controller. Uh, then going to Portal 2, I had the same, very same experience. Uh, I didn't have to change any controls for Portal 2. I actually found that the, um, the, the f objects that you use most in Portal 2, like the, the two different teleport buttons, so the green and the, or the orange and the blue, sorry, and then the use button and the jump button and then the movement buttons are all, all well designed for the Steam controller. So you have your back triggers. Uh, the back right trigger is use, so that's to pick up objects, and the back left trigger is to jump. And then you have your mouse trackpad that is so you can look around with your portal gun. And then you have the analog stick to actually move your character. And then the triggers, the left and right trigger, serves for the different portals. So you really, it was actually really nice. I was um, worried about some of the more complicated puzzles inside a portal with when you get launched or you have to jump and shoot a portal at the same time, how it would work with the Steam controller. But it actually worked fairly well because you didn't have to lift your hands off of, or your fingers off of any of the um, buttons to press another button, if that makes sense. I was able to move to a portal or use and pick up an object all without um, having to move my hand. I was just one click away. So that was really convenient. Uh, and then moving on to some of the games that weren't given to me with the Steam controller. So some games that may not necessarily be made for it. Uh, going to Counter-Strike first. So Counter-Strike, I knew going in that you're probably not going to want to use a controller, but I wanted to give it a good test. Um, the sensitivity that's set to default in Counter-Strike is insane. I was running around and I felt like I was twi very slightly moving the mouse touchpad and my character was looking like a whole 180 degrees. Uh, so that didn't work out very well, and I was, that set me off to not a great start on what I thought about the controller with this type of first-person shooter. Uh, but I dropped the sensitivity down, I actually learned some of the controls a little bit better, and it actually wasn't too bad. I mean, I was playing against bots, um, I, was, I think I was playing against hard or expert bots, and I was able to actually get some kills, play slightly competitively, but this is not something that you're going to want to go into a competitive match in Counter-Strike to play against because you're going to lose against someone with a mouse and keyboard every single day. This might just be something to screw around, some practice on routes, some practice on using grenades, um, some practice on just uh, going around a corner and pre-firing against bots or even just some casual matches with some friends, then I would recommend it. But if you're going to be playing competitively, just stick with the keyboard and mouse. I don't think it's going to outgun anyone that's actually playing the way Counter-Strike was meant to be played, and that's, in my opinion, with a keyboard and mouse. And then moving on to my final test with Civilization V, I actually really enjoyed it. I think that this type of game, so like this and Rocket League, are the type of games that are built for uh, this controller. The idea of the controller is to bring back couch gaming, but to for a PC, away from a console. And Civilization V being a real-time strategy, it's um, not as fast paced. There's large objects, objects that are interactable, um, and that's where the controller shines because you can move the um, angle and move the camera around the map very easily with analog stick. You can select different um, options and different learning paths using the buttons on the controller, and you can zoom out and in and see your opponents very easily just using the controls that are built into the Steam controller already. And that's the same experience that I talked about with Rocket League, where everything that you need is just built right in within a few buttons, and it's just, they're also those type of games that you can just sit down on a couch and enjoy playing without really much needed um, extras into that, like you would for Counter-Strike. The Counter-Strike's just very involved. Uh, so my overall review, if you're looking at purchasing this for some couch gaming, like playing a racing game or playing a real-time strategy game like Civ or doing something fun just like Portal with some friends, something very casual, um, not super competitive. Uh, I wouldn't recommend really playing first-person shooters with a controller. Then I think it's a great buy. I think it's fun. It's a very interesting take on the controller. 
I'm looking forward to seeing what their year two model might be or version two it may not necessarily be in one year but whatever their next take on the controller will be um, to see how they improve upon it because this has been a much improvement over some of the alphas that they released a couple years ago when they were talking about this controller link at first so like I said um, I, I enjoy it I think it's fun if you're looking for it as a replacement of like your Xbox 360 controller when you're playing Call of Duty or something or a game like that on your PC I'm not sure if that this is going to be a replacement for that um, but if you're looking for just something that will work well with your with Steam and work well with the Steam um, pick big picture mode and work well with games like Portal and uh, Civilization then I think this is a good good option to purchase um, but let me know uh, what you guys think please start send me some comments I'm interested to have a discussion about this or do you have a steam controller or have you been using it uh, what are your opinions on what games work well with it or what games don't work well with it do you think I covered enough uh, but like I said please let me know I'm very interested to hear your thoughts but uh, hope your day is beer and skittles guys please enjoy your holiday and as always thanks for tuning in